Hi everybody, it's me. It's been a very long time since I've uh, posted a, uh, a video log on my series here at TFCC Repair uh, slash Only Osteotomy. Uh, my apologies, it's been a very long time. I had a lot of uh, personal things going on, not to mention just my medical complications from this uh, endeavor. Um, so I always had meant to have a final outcome, final assessments video series, and I was hoping that it would be at the one year mark, um, and I'm actually 15 months post-op. So um, I'm going to have to do a recap here because it's been quite a while. Um, so I'll do my best to make it uh, quick and simple and to the point. Um, so my first surgery was exactly 15 months ago today and everything seemed to go pretty well until um, about four and a half months in when um, I'd always had a little bit of pain from um, my mid forearm area of course a lot of pain in the beginning because my ulna had been cut in half right so of course it's going to be painful but that pain never really got better and it started to get worse after about the four and a half month mark i knew something was really wrong when um just about close to the five month mark just cleaning a table one day just that motion of just wiping the table was really painful in my mid mid forearm area just felt like my arm was going to snap or something and it also started making a lot of funny noises making crunching noises, cracking noises, um, people started noticing the noises and commenting about the noises and I'm like yeah that's my arm and it wasn't from my wrist it was from right in my forearm mostly um, twisting mostly um, but couldn't put almost any pressure especially any lateral pressure pushing away anything like this um, definitely couldn't do it it was too painful and I, I had to wait a while to get my doctor's appointment um, they wouldn't let me get a sooner appointment uh, my appointment was my six month follow-up appointment. So anyways I saw him um, and uh, he took a look at things and uh, initially said yeah there's there's definitely something going on in there I'm not really sure what it is but it could be something to do with maybe your body is just uh, rejecting the hardware just not liking the hardware um, and then I demonstrated the noises for him and then he, uh, he became visibly concerned pretty quick and said yeah we definitely need to do something there's definitely something going on with the hardware in there. He felt around a bit and um, there was a spot um, right at the end here, uh, more towards the middle, right at the end of the plate, basically, that was pretty sore, pretty tender, a little bit painful um, when he pushed on it. So, uh, and um, he said, okay, yeah, uh, I think we should definitely have a second surgery to have that hardware removed, and we'll also look in there and see if uh, anything's going on. Um, that was... Uh, really difficult time for me because the whole point of doing the two procedures during the first surgery was so that I would never have to have a second surgery and here I was having another one anyways. Um, not, a, not a good time in my life, definitely not. Um, it got even worse when uh, the surgery scheduler called a couple days later and said that he was three months out on surgery so I was going to have to tough it out for another three months. Um, what a rough time. So uh, I managed and uh, made life work and uh, so I had a second surgery uh, six months ago today, back in the uh, uh, end of March. And um, it was uh, much easier than the first one, I can tell you that one. Uh, he went in, took out the hardware, um, he never came and visited me post-op, uh, we never spoke after that so I don't you don't really know the full details. Um, kind of odd, right? Um, but uh, the nurse came by and uh, I, I was feeling really good this time. I, I was up and at it like within a half an hour post-op and I was literally ready to go home within like 45 minutes. Um, this one was much, much easier and a lot less painful than the first time. And she had a bag in her, in her hand and she goes, um, you know, here's your hardware. You can go ahead and have it, it's yours. And then, I mean, you mean the hardware in my arm? Yeah, it's yours. We cleaned it, sterilized it. And I said, okay, cool. And she says, you know, just keep, uh, just so you know, there was a, a bit of bone on the plate that we couldn't get off. We tried to scrub it off, it didn't come off. But, you know, it's been sterilized. It's in, it's in this sealed bag, so you can take it. So, um, like I said, the surgery was uh, very easy. Um, you know, they weren't cutting any bone per se, they were just removing the screws and the plate. Um, so got home and uh, I think I only took one pain, narcotic painkiller and I think the rest of the time I was just on a, a Tylenol 
um, was not that painful at all this time. Um, the next day, um, of course, the incision area was going to be pretty pretty sore, uh, a bit painful. But um, you know, I decided to do a little test. Um, I had a soft cast on up to my elbow, um, just mainly to protect the incision area. But um, I did have my knuckles were exposed, so I went to the wall and I pushed my knuckles up. I mean, full as hard as I could, full body weight on my arm and zero pain, zero, which is amazing because just a couple of days earlier that would have been absolutely uh, excruciating and this time zero pain. Um, so I knew things were, it had immediately gone better and was kind of surprised at, you know, how it was resolved so quickly by just having that hardware removed. So I looked at the hardware and, you know, she, like I said, the nurse had mentioned about the bone. So here is the hardware, by the way, it's a titanium plate, seven holes. Um, it was in, uh, in my arm, basically, uh, sorry, just about like that, right? Came with seven little screws like this. Titanium screws, on. oops. Titanium screws also. Probably can't see them too well um, in, this, in this video, but don't worry, I'm gonna be uh, attaching a lot of really good photos at the end of this video, so watch to the very end. Um, so I looked at it, and it clearly says right on it, proximal, which is towards your elbow, and distal, which is towards your wrist. And the most proximal hole, which is this hole right, this hole right here, and you can't see it in this video probably, um, but it's uh, pretty much about three quarters of the way, two thirds of the way full. The threads are full with bone. And I looked at a corresponding screw, and that one was full of bone also. Again, don't worry, I attach pictures at the end of the video to see the specifics. So, um, so I threaded these things in, so on the distal end, the wrist end, if you, if you put a screw in, it threads in about three full turns, and once it's fully in, it's completely flush. Right? So, but <clears throat> if I put it in the proximal hole, which is basically right at the exact area where I had all the pain and put it in, um, it'll only go about one and a half, two turns. So I don't know if you can see the difference there, but you know, this one's totally flush, this one, the head's sticking out, and it moves back and forth a bit. So that explains it. That explains uh, why it was so painful, because that screw was not, uh, not fully tightened. It was loose. So. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, and that explains why as soon as I, <clears throat> you know, that, that uh, day after the surgery when I put my arm on the wall, I just had no pain at all because that screw was not getting uh, tweaked anymore. So, uh, very happy about that. Um, I uh, didn't actually even go to my post-op uh, appointment. Um, Long story why, um, <clears throat> honestly, too many, just too many things going on in my life. I didn't even want to deal with it, to be honest, is my easy sex explanation. So I didn't even go. What I did was 10 days later, um, I took the soft cast off myself. Um, I had a um, nylon suture that was um, from here to here, like that sticking out and basically just took tweezers and pulled it out one one long um, thing. It wasn't those kind of sutures that's, that uh, are stitched through. Um, pretty painless pretty much. Um, took it easy um, and uh, they had already told me beforehand that uh, I wasn't going to have physical therapy anyway so again no real impetus for me to go to the post-op uh, doctor's appointment anyways, I'm not going to prescribe physical therapy anyways, even though uh, my wrist still barely moved 50% in that flexing, the downward range, if you remember from my four-month video. So um, I've been doing all my own physical therapy since then, um, stopped about a month ago, so I still ended up doing um, my own stretching and exercising and strengthening for about five months um, post-op that second surgery. Um, I did have one minor complication, 
from, which hadn't actually been there since the first surgery, which is I had a really sore spot right here, this bone, and you guys, it's called the pisiform, and um, I think it was because the casts were so tight, that tender spot, it was pretty painful, and uh, two months ago, roughly two and a half months ago, I ended up seeing a second doctor, um, he ended up giving me two shots of cortisone in the wrist right there, right, right at the pisiform, and uh, that pain is pretty much gone. It was kind of a minor complication, really. So that brings us to um, today. Where am I at today? Um, well, everyone keeps asking me, um, you know, was it worth it? Uh, would I do it again, etc.? Well, let's see. Let me explain to you where I am now. So I'm basically about 95% range of motion in all all ranges. So that's that's up, bending up. That's Bending down, flexing down, left, right, you know, um, twisting. And 95% is good. That's not a bad number. Um, you can't you can't expect 100% uh, after surgeries. Um, you know, two surgeries especially um, this extensive. So and strength um, is pretty much 100% in in all ranges except for um, my pinky and ring finger are only about half as strong as they used to be. Um, I know that because I had exercise squeeze balls um, that I squeezed to do strengthening and to this day no matter how much I've tried to strengthen these two they're only half as strong as they used to be or as strong as my other, other arm but that's not really a big deal um, limitations um, slight limitations um, main one being I can't do anything quick uh, you know if I jerk the, the wrist quick um, it can be a, a little bit painful um, at the ends of the range of motion, if I really push on them, um, it can be a little bit painful. Um, I've been uh, working out at the gym for quite a while, um, doing pretty much uh, unlimited lifting, um, and I can do pretty good. I'm not. I'm not going to complain. I can do full, full lifting, full weight, no complaints. Again, it's it's more at those ends of the range of motion that it can be a little bit finicky. Um, the main limitation is that. Um, if uh, if I do a lot of hard work with it for a while, let's say like an hour, um, it will get pretty stiff and a little bit sore the next day, sometimes two days. So, um, you know, doing a lot, a lot of work can definitely aggravate it still. But um, as far as the TFC, the original TFCC pain, that's been gone, completely gone for a long time. Um, you know, I would have had pain deviating to the right deviating down to the right or just deviating down at all. That's been completely gone. Um, I haven't had any osteotomy pain um, in uh, basically since the uh, second surgery, zero. So, um, you know, I'm pretty happy now. Uh, it took 15 months, um, two years since the initial pain, all well, just under two years. Um, so, you know, it's been a really long haul. Um, would I do it again? Wow, that's a really, really difficult question to answer. Um, there's a lot of variables in there. If I had known certain things, I would have, I would say yes, but sometimes I would say no. Um, you know, uh, it was just such a long, painful journey that, gosh, I'm really on the fence. Um, I probably would have to say yes, I would do it again in the end. Um, with a big but, and that but is is that um, I would have done a little bit more research, um, and I would have found probably maybe um, a little bit more out from my insurance company about things like um, occupational therapy, physical therapy. Um, my insurance carrier really let me down in that arena. I mean, I literally in total only saw a occupational therapist six times. That's it, um, <clears throat> and um, you know that's pretty. That's pretty poor for this kind of this invasive of a procedure. Um, I've I've heard of people seeing a therapist once a week for six months for this kind of procedure, and uh, my insurance company was just not just not going to have it. They were not prepared for it or willing to do it. Um, Another but would be, um, you know, your job. Um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, I used to be an auto mechanic. Used my wrist a lot. Um, those days are definitely done. I could, there's no way that I could 
I could work on cars full time with this wrist now. Um, I could barely do it before, definitely couldn't do it now, um, just not full time. Can I do it? Yeah, but not eight, nine, ten hours a day, that's for sure. There's just no way it's going to happen. So, you know, um, I would have been more prepared to knowing that. Um, you know, the length of time, uh, it's just, just way, way too long. So if I had known the length of time, I don't know, would that have swayed me? Hard to say, you know. Uh, you know, you kind of have to make your own decisions sometimes just based on your lifestyle. So, um, would I have done things differently? Well, if I'd known these things, yeah. Uh, but, really, really hard questions to answer because there's just so many, so many variables. But, the point is, is that it's been 15 months and um, I'm happy with it now. Uh, I'm pain free pretty much now. Um, definitely pain free as far as the original issue, the TFCC issue. That's completely resolved. So um, that is what it is. Um, you know, I probably forgot a few things during this video, but you know, is it, is, I could go on for half an hour and I don't want to do that. I don't want this to make this the quickest, shortest video as possible. So I really hope that uh, this helps people uh, in the future. That's the whole point of why I made this series was to help people maybe decide, make an educated decision on whether they want to do this kind of thing. Um, really do your research. Really uh, you know, know your doctor well. Make sure he's a good doctor, a good surgeon. Uh, make sure that uh, you have access to good, regular occupational or physical therapy. Uh, make sure that either your doctor or your therapist are not weeks or months out on appointments beforehand. Um, I ran into that way too many times. Uh, you know, waiting five weeks to see a physical therapist is just not going to happen. It's just not, not acceptable with this kind of procedure. So, um, other than that, um, not much else I can really say. And, you know, if you have questions, you know, go ahead and ask. I'm sure I forgot a few things here. I'm sure I could clarify on some things. Um, like I said at the end of this video, I'm going to uh, attach a lot of uh, pretty good um, photos, some describing and showing um, my before and after x-rays because I do have my before x-rays to show my uh, positive ulnar variants. Um, you can't see the TFCC in those x-rays, but um, you know, keep in mind your TFCC is right at the end of your ulna, so if you just look at the end of the uh, on the x-ray you can you can basically uh, figure out where the TFCC is um, as well as a few other um, photos post-op photos and things so I really hope that this helps people again that was the original intention and uh, if anyone has any questions I I don't mind I don't mind answering and uh, you know I want to thank everyone for the support it was a really really difficult time and uh, a lot of people, friends, family, and uh, YouTubers as well um, are very supportive. And I want to thank uh, everybody for all that. And uh, that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you all. Bye.